What's up everybody? Welcome to a new video. Today, we're seeing how well Driver 3 holds up after 15 years. Driver 3 was developed by Reflections Interactive and published by Atari. It was released in North America on June 21st, 2004. It's an open world action adventure game scoring a 40% on Metacritic and a 3 out of 10 on Eurogamer. Driver 3 is known as a lackluster ripoff of the Grand Theft Auto series. Admittedly, I enjoyed this game when it came out. Maybe it was because I was young and easily entertained. I never did any missions, I just drove around and killed people. It's been 15 years since the game came out, so I decided to dust the game off my shelf and play it through. Here are my thoughts 15 years later. After playing the game for about an hour, I decided to jot down some initial thoughts. Driver 3 starts off like a movie, with a surprising cast. It's extremely cinematic, which is something that I rarely see in early 2000s games. A ridiculously weird mechanic is the fact that when you complete a mission, you get this mission complete screen. And then you have the option to click next mission, and you get thrown right into the next one. I think it's worth mentioning that in any other open world game, you have an open world and missions at the same time. In this game, however, from what I understand, you have to choose on the main menu, either story mode or free roam, which is ass backwards. This game even has a jab at its competitor, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. In Vice City, you play as Tommy Vassetti. In Driver 3, there is a collectible item, which is a guy called Timmy Vermicelli, which looks just like Vice City Star, with blue jeans and a Hawaiian shirt. He's also rocking some floaties, because in Vice City, you can't swim. You get the collection alert when you kill him. On to our next topic of discussion, the controls. The controls were extremely tough to get used to because the one weird thing is the camera is fucking glued to your back, which is not the case in most third person games. Usually it's a free roaming camera so you can move the camera in any direction you want. That's not the case in this game. The aiming controls were inverted so I had to change them in the main menu. The controls are not explained to you like they are in any other game so I struggled to figure out how to do anything. Driving controls are a little stiff, but they're not the worst. The shooting controls, however, are very stiff, even when you raise the sensitivity all the way. It's important to mention that there is no sprint button that I could figure out, which is extremely frustrating because I'm always in a hurry to get somewhere. I stopped recording the game after a couple of hours because the game was so hard due to the wonky controls, specifically the shooting controls, which is vital in almost every single mission. On to the graphics. Now this is a controversial subject because on the internet I've seen gameplay of this and it looks fucking fantastic. And then I go and record it myself and it looks awful. Anytime you record a PS2 game or play it on a modern TV that's HD, it looks like shit. It's really dark, so I can't use that against the game. The graphics aren't terrible, but the draw distance was awful. Especially when you have to chase a car who is a ways ahead of you. You can barely see the car. Compared to other PlayStation 2 games at the time, it's not the best, but it's not terrible. Now on to mission quality. After five missions in, there's a chase mission, and you gotta be up the guy's ass to pass this. If you crash once, you fail, and you gotta redo the whole thing. There is only a few missions you get checkpoints in. The rest of them, if you die or you fail, you gotta restart the whole thing. Which wouldn't be terrible if most of the missions didn't require you to drive across the map. Most of the missions go as followed. Chase this car, kill him, drive across the map. Kill 40 guys, take this thing, drive back. Go meet this guy, destroy something, go back, rinse, and fucking repeat. Pretty standard GTA missions, except Grand Theft Auto ones aren't as hard because the controls were a lot better. I must have failed missions a million times while recording this. Okay, here is the ultimate question. Overall, did Driver 3 entertain me 15 years later? The short answer is no. It did not hold up as well as I thought it would. Specifically for the terrible controls, boring missions, awful aiming mechanics, even the free mode was not as entertaining as it used to be. 
Probably because I know how awesome GTA is now, but even as viewing it as its standalone game, I did not enjoy it as much as I used to. Which honestly was upsetting because I thought a treasured game from my childhood would have held up a lot better. Here are my final comments. When I was a kid, this game entertained me for hours. I came back 15 years later to see if it held up. Although it did not hold up and I didn't really enjoy it, it's not the worst game I've ever played. I've definitely played worse. Pick it up and play it yourself. I'd love to see what everybody else thinks. My opinion is my own. Somebody else might have a fucking fantastic time playing this. I had an okay experience. That being said, thanks for watching everybody. I greatly appreciate everyone watching this. It was a lot of fun making this and capturing the gameplay and whatnot. Keep your eye out for the next video. See you later. This is how it's gonna be.